tell us in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button and share this video with everyone you know. Good evening, everybody. Uh, are you ready with your uh, notebook and pencils or ball pens for tonight? As we enter another level of modular learning on how to harness luck for our business. And tonight, we have a very special topic that will be uh, starting on the right foot if you're to start a business or review by hindsight how you started your business and in case where uh, the defects are if you're not uh, as lucky as you can be at the moment. You know? So our module for tonight is called Choosing a business to grow rich in using Feng Shui, okay? And if I ask you if you believe in lucky numbers last meeting, last class, tonight, I ask you, do you believe in vibes? Vibes, short for vibrations. Energy travels in vibrations, in waves, no? So, there's that thing as good vibes and bad vibes. And every one of us, businessman or not, is born with a certain distinct good vibes or bad vibes. In Tagalog, we call that where we're young. No? In English, that's where we are comfortably in a state of effortless ease. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, this is where the link of Feng Shui scientifically uh, clicks with choosing a business. If you know uh, where you are good vibes in, so choose a business that will bring you good vibes and avoid businesses that are bad vibes. And this time, it will be the other way around. Uh, she takes the role of student instead of professor. Let's welcome uh, Professor uh, Miss Mia Martinez, our guest for tonight. Mia? Magandang gabi po, Master. Maulang gabi sa iyo dyan. Magandang gabi. Uh, I hope uh, it's not raining that hard. It's uh, stormy weather all over the uh, metropolis. Uh, we're under signal number three currently. Number three, yes. So, Mia, uh, I chose you for this uh, week's uh, because of your uh, persistent interest on finding <laughs> out what business to delve into. Uh, I yes. understand you have many offers, no? uh, job offers, uh, aside from your uh, regular teaching job, okay? Mm -hmm. so, uh, we will uh, process that uh, from a consultant's viewpoint or a mentoring viewpoint. We will process your concern as we go along. Uh, meantime, uh, let's see uh, where you're coming from. Uh, how long have you been teaching? Um, combined years of teaching, because uh, I, I used to teach in, I told you, in La Salle, College of St. Benilde, combined is six years. Uh -huh. Okay, let's show and two the... years in Four years in College of St. Benilde and now two years in University of Makati. Uh, and you also graduated from uh, St. Benilde, right? Yes, College of St. Benilde. Uh -huh. So... It's one of the leading schools in, uh, I understand, in uh, computer graphics and uh, industrial design. You, yes. you finished uh, industrial design? Yes, industrial design. I see, that's great, that's great. Teaching so, um, under the College of uh, Business and Financial Science in University of Makati and currently handing loads for marketing management, business management, strategic management, um, financial management, and marketing. So, uh, mostly business subjects. for uh, our first uh, lessons? 
Yes. Okay. So uh, I'm very I'm very ready. Okay. Let's uh, start with our first uh, module slide. Okay. So can you please uh, read? In Feng Shui philosophy, there are five elements. Okay. That's how the Chinese view the world. Huh? They view it as consisting of five elements. Not necessarily in that order. There is water, okay, a life-giving substance around us. Then... We have wood. We have wood, okay, around us, our forests. Uh, that provide us uh, oxygen and other life-giving substance and of course we all know that oxygen produces uh, uh, heat and energy fire. and causes fire also so fire. that's the third element fire okay uh, the fourth element is earth. earth okay uh, next the last element is Metal. Metal. Okay. Now, in Feng Shui, understanding this core philosophy that the worldview of the Chinese and, uh, of course, included there would be Feng Shui uh, philosophy. The worldview is that the universe just consists of uh, these five elements. And normally, these five elements are no different uh, do you remember your chemical table of elements in high school chemistry? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, you had to memorize them, right? And uh, for every element, let's say gold, which symbolized by the element AU, uh, they have valences in the right-hand corner of the uh, chemical element table, right? And yeah. the valences are can be either positive or negative and they're the ones that are critical in what we call bonding of elements to manifest or form other uh, uh, substances okay so when you combine several so actually our table of chemical elements is the codigo or the source code for all industrialization that we enjoy now Okay, what makes steel, what makes all this, um, you, you, you study industrial design, what you're able to design, the materials that you use, were all actually chemically produced, right? Uh, from plastics to uh, uh, other, as long as they're synthetic, okay, and chemically, uh, even our pharmaceuticals, our drugs, our medicines, and uh, just like now, they're developing vaccines, right, for our uh, pandemia. So, uh, from a Chinese uh, viewpoint, all these uh, global degook of uh, chemical elements are simplified into just five elements, okay? The wood, water, fire uh, cycle. And the key to understanding um, your good vibes and bad vibes as we relate to our initial introduction will be what we call the productive cycle of these elements. This you okay. have to really take note and uh, uh, memorize. Okay, Take it to heart because this will, as I mentioned earlier, will be the gateway to your various understanding of various segments of Feng Shui that can help transform your life, okay? Uh, just for example, what we're taking up tonight is this will define where, what, and where and what businesses you can grow rich and prosper in, in no? because you will be uh, young or uh, be uh, in good energy as well as effortless uh, ease and comfortable yeah. when you're doing business in this field. Uh, others would be colors, okay? These elements later on you learn would have colors. They can define, as you graduated in industrial design, colors is also a form of energy, 
Uh, yeah. And they can define and communicate uh, appeals of energy to uh, various market segments. Like a popular notion would be color orange would invite hunger. That's why fast yeah. food chairs, they That's are true. normally orange, okay? So, These five elements in feng shui form of a productive cycle as follows. So remember that productive cycle. That's the key word. Okay, continue, please. So water produces wood. Wood produces fire. Fire produces earth. Earth produces metal, and metal produces water. Okay. Ah, uh, let's stop there for a while. I will uh, uh, read between the lines and show you examples on how to grasp this concept. Uh, with water. Seeds grow, no? plants grow, the forests grow. With rainwater uh, in the environment, uh, growth of vegetation uh, ensues. So, vegetation or the forests are symbolized by the element wood okay, in nature. So, water produces wood. Okay? Uh, get the drift. Next is wood produces fire so literally uh, wood as men civilized uh, they discovered that they can produce fire out of wood and of course wood became firewood <laughs> so from the first uh, eta type of uh, making fire from wood to the more contemporary bakeries where you use literally the firewood for uh, wood. Uh, okay. baking, no? okay, pizza, for, uh, <laughs> for charcoal uh, using uh, baking, uh, it produces fire. Okay, then fire, the remnant of fire are ashes, and ashes literally, as the Bible says, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. It is a symbol of earth. Lupa, no? So, yung apoy nagiging lupa. Fire produces earth. Okay? So, that's a very simple uh, cycle. And earth, in turn, through time, produces metal. Underneath the earth, that's where we mine all the minerals, gold, and other uh, metallic uh, minerals. Iron. That, yeah, we use for industrial production and design no? for goods and services production and mainly that's the trigger for uh, human civilization's uh, industrialization okay then metal produces water ito yung uh, do you remember in your laboratory experiments in chemistry you, uh, you distillate metal Kahit, yes. na anong, kahit na anong copy mo sa valedictorian o sa class gold, ang ending conclusion, I therefore conclude gold, when distillated, produces always water. Any form of water. Metal, well, when you burn it at a certain degree of temperature, it will produce water. This is the productive okay. cycle. Uh, it goes on uh, counterclockwise in any way you do it, but uh, let's say we start with water produces wood, then fire, then earth, then metal, the five elements, okay? Now, uh, please copy this now, if you can yeah. produce it in your, no? So, this is your mother código, okay? As we go along, this will guide you on how to choose the right business where you can be prosperous and rich. Okay? In summary, for water person, Metal, water, and wood. Yes, as we discussed. Okay, next slide, please. For wood person, water, wood, and fire. Okay, we are now summarizing and giving you, spoon feeding you, actually, uh, the código for every type of person. So, tapos na tayo sa water. Uh, Yung, if you're a water person, you have opportunities to succeed in water, wood, and metal, right? 
Now, the mm-hmm. second element, person. If you're a wood person, you can succeed in uh, the one that produce you water, then your homeroom wood, and what you can produce fire. Okay. So, example, yeah, you're a wood person, uh, Mia, right? Uh, I will not mention any more your birthday or uh, no, I'm Earth. Of, yeah, for your <laughs> for reasons of national security. Okay. <laughs> 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 I will okay. not mention your birthday, no. But uh, based on our calculations, you're a wood person. So. Your opportunities to succeed are in wood. And you know, that's where you are now. Education. Teaching. You know why? Why? Books. You deal with books. Education, the key method of learning is to books, the printed word. Uh, it mm-hmm. uses paper. Okay? Uh mm-hmm. You gauge learning by the test papers. All around, you use paper, term paper, <laughs> everything. But uh, you bond with your students with one paper, <laughs> okay? The printed matter, the hard copy, eventually, no? Uh, nowadays, it's through email or uh, paperless, no? But the same concept was uh, derived from the original paper society, okay? And paper pulp and paper actually is derived from wood you get the very simple yes. analogy from a chinese feng shui viewpoint so you're yes. at home you're here in teaching in education okay so that alone uh opens a lot of vistas or opportunity for you to succeed already one element alone wood you're into teaching, right? Mm-hmm. You can diversify into writing. Writing mm-hmm. books, publication, also using paper to produce books or even pamphlets for that matter. So, that endeavor alone, publishing, be it self-publishing or be published by a, a established uh, uh, publishing house, let's say like uh, in the Philippines, it's Anvil or uh, any other uh, institution, even your school, no? I think University of Makati would have their own press, right? Uh, publishing. Yeah. Book. So, if you write something about strategic management, a book, you can endeavor your collaboration with your uh, mother school to produce the textbook. Okay? So, that's a money ma- making opportunity. That's a new business. In itself. Why I would endeavor yeah. you to take notes, or when this is replayed, you take notes because it can help. Me not. Yeah, it can help guide you not only for you, but potential business partners, and most of all for your loved ones, your kids, the family. You can guide them as to saan sila hiyam. Okay, mm-hmm. that's the whole essence of feng shui, even in family planning and investments. Okay. So okay. that's where our Chinoy brothers have a competitive edge over the normal. Okay. Uh, it's not racism at all. We're not in America. Okay. Uh, it's just the culture. There's a different Hugo or perspective in their making business. Okay. And making profits. Okay. So that's the whole. Rick Merrill. Now, uh, before we go to uh, what we call the destructive cycle, ano naman yung dapat iwasan? Okay? There's always a yin and yang. A good vibes and a bad vibes, a positive and negative. What we've discussed earlier are the good vibes. And normally, as they say, yung bawal ang masarap. Okay? <laughs> Do not enter. Okay? So, please read. There is a destructive cycle of feng shui elements. It can create bad luck in business, so be careful. Okay, so next slide. Destruction cycle of elements. Water destroys fire and vice versa. Fire destroys water. Water destroys earth. 
and vice versa. And earth destroys water. Okay, let me uh, uh, explain this uh, uh, complicated uh, terminology. Okay, so water uh, destroys fire. Obviously, uh, you you pour water over fire, uh, you put out the fire, you know. But vice versa, fire destroys water. How? It can evaporate water. Right, uh, too much fire, boiling water, uh, eventually uh, water state uh, changes its state from liquid to uh, uh, ano, evaporated. Okay, so it can destroy. So water and fire destroy each other. Next, uh, there fire destroys water. Next is water also destroys earth you can see this now in stormy weather in typhoons no uh the floods destroy the rice fields or they cause landslides they soften the earth and uh, destroys it okay and uh, vice versa earth the man can destroy water or control water that's where we can see uh uh in some places they use earthen dikes uh, to stop or dump the water especially in rice uh, fields the pilapil and uh, even in dams or fish ponds no? so we can see that earth can also destroy water okay so, so they're clashing yeah, so you have to be careful. Uh, the real message of this is, if you're a water element, avoid fire business, okay? And if you're fire, avoid water, okay? But there is what we call a hugo tier or a high risk, high return proposition in feng shui. Uh, there is an option for you to make use of this if you're willing and able. Uh, you can choose a contrary destructive cycle. Let's say if you're water and you can destroy fire, you can uh, enter that business. Of course, at your own risk, but on a high risk, high return. Kumbaga, Earlier, we learned that you have three elements that you can enter, right? Like for you, for mm-hmm. wood, uh, later we'll tackle ano yung wedding high risk, high return mo. But for every person, there is a high risk, high return uh, opportunity also using the destructive cycle of elements. Is that clear? Yes, very clear. Okay. How do you feel? Fuck you! <laughs> okay. So next, next slide, please. So metal destroys wood, wood destroys metal, metal destroys fire, and fire destroys metal. We've already uh, 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 discussed that, like uh, uh, canal diggings. Uh, you can regulate uh, the flow of water by. Uh, irrigation systems or uh, uh, building dikes no? along rivers to control the flood or flood control systems. Now, water demand destroys earth uh, depending on the purpose of uh, the business. Like uh, for some now, they create a mini. Have you heard of a mini or micro dams? Mm-hmm. To yeah. Produce, um, in villages or in some barrios, they produce uh, electric power, hydro. Okay, mm-hmm. so that's one productive uh, uh, way of uh, making business. Now, earth destroys fire. Okay, so ito naman yung halos na sa ano na to, related to your firefighting equipment, no? So lalo na yung mga uh, industrial fire 
control systems like sa airports uh, pagka na nagkaroon ng crash or ano they use sometimes they use earth no uh, sand literally uh, sinasabuyan nila ng sand or uh, chemical uh, composition na halos earth din ang dating no? well, that fire this fire destroys earth yan naman you see yung mga ceramic production porcelain di ba making of plates uh, or blown glass or glass per se glass manufacturing fire mm-hmm. destroys the controls the silica by molding them into proper designs as you've learned in uh, industrial design okay so mm-hmm. how, how do you find it so far uh, is it too complicated or very simple no very helpful and uh, very simple naman siya pag natutunan mo na pag natutunan mo masisilip mo na paano kaya yaman ba okay so each person must avoid at least two business elements that can cause bad luck and losses okay but in between the lines there is what you call a high risk high return opportunity uh which we discussed and you can find out for yourself uh, if it will suit you of course if you're medyo ambivalent or alanganin uh, there are feng shui masters who can guide you uh, which you can engage professionally later okay so next slide please. okay okay now i'll show you one decade example of how it is no uh, this is what the Uh, feng Shui masters use like let's check uh, hereditarily kung may consistency let's say your lolo or lola born in the 1930s up to uh, I think 40s no? so you can uh, read uh, just uh, let's just cite an example 1930 for male Ma- if you were born 1930 male metal male. female earth okay Our male is metal, female earth. So this is how you use it. This is how to find out uh, based on the year that you were born. No, but there's a cut off period. Uh, the Feng Shui uh, cut off period for each year is uh, first day of spring, February 4, up to February 3 of the next year. Okay, so when you say you're 1930. That means you should be uh, belonging to those born February 4, 1930, uh, up to February 3, 1931. Then you belong to this category. If you're male, you're metal. You get the point? Okay. So that will apply to all. Uh, for every year, there's an equivalent. For some years. The male and female are the same, like in 1934, uh, right? Huh? Is that 1934? They're both wood. You, you see it, Mia? Yes. Okay. Male wood, female wood in 1934. Yeah. Oh, you, normally, you see the pattern, it changes yin and yang for male and female, but there are years because energy travels in cycles or in waves there will be an intersection that they'll be equal no uh in terms of uh elements no so given this that's the whole concept and okay with this concept in mind we can proceed now to the question and answer portion Uh, I think we have satisfied your personal concern, no? Uh, being a wood person, yes. the three business opportunities you can basically enter in. Multifarious and uh, mm-hmm. yung uh, hugot. The pinaka uh, hugot sa'yo in terms of, uh, of uh, being wood, the high risk, high return would be any metal industry. Okay, so you you can see in your career, uh, 
there are times that you get in, involved in metal industry. Your metal industry that you've been involved in is uh, as you related to me when you were involved in uh, tourism, uh, sky jet. Aviation. Yeah, aviation. aviation. Aviation, yes. It's metal because the planes are metal, no? So Airplane. But it's high risk, high return for you. Okay. But I did uh, well there. Yeah, we did well right. there. But when you do well, even even like in a, no, even in sea air. Also, you you were bought into sea air and uh, no, no, and uh, sky jet. So something you can still explore. Okay. Uh, so that's your who got. That means your high risk, high return field metal. Aside from the three. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, key elements of the I'd like to guy. thank you for um for uh, your very very good lecture tonight i really learned a lot i have uh, some potential uh, business that uh, is being offered to me for 2020 and uh, sorry 2021 and this is very helpful because this time i can use the formula that you 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 gave me and uh, I can use it in future business dealings. Yeah, please do. I'll, I'll share with you one short, short story. Uh, this one, I was learning Feng Shui. I encountered in Binondo, somewhere borderline of Binondo and uh, uh, Divisoria. You know, Divisoria, kanya kanyang kali yan, may kali ng tela, di ba? So, nandun ako sa mm-hmm. mga dried fish. Magtitinda lang ng tuyo, no? Uh, I was then involved in a real estate company and I was offering the owner real estate. He said no because of Feng Shui. I said, why? At that time, I don't know Feng Shui yet. He said, you will not understand yet because you don't know Feng Shui. But in Feng Shui, bagay lang sa akin, water. Dried fish, tuyo, is water okay because it's symbol of water the fish uh, so lupa bawal sa akin because it's destructive cycle no so he will ah, okay. but you know he's just there in sando making pai pai with jario and selling his to you but his to you is being also exported to san francisco london uh middle east and that's outside his father. He enters a small hole inside his real estate, his mansion inside, aside from his vacation houses in uh, Tagaytay, Green Hills, Baguio. <laughs> okay. So that's how rich he was, just because he focused on his elemental business. Okay. And by the way, I see. now that we mentioned elemental business, you now understand the meaning of elemental in Feng Shui. It's not about Capre. It's yes. not about Duende. It's not about elemental, but about the Feng Shui or Chinese philosophy elements, the five elements. Okay? So, I'd yes. like to invite everybody now, your classmates and everybody listening now, to tune in next week. That will be our next topic. topic. We'll go higher level. We will tackle for each element what would be the range of businesses the types like right now we just discussed of a very shallow icing on the cake like for you wood it can be teaching who got meta we'll go a long list of uh, all the potential uh, list of uh, industries as you mentioned and even our small businesses especially in this time of pandemic okay you can learn so well. thank you very much uh, professor huh? uh, thank you rinpo stay tuned for the next episode only here on big media